Well, hello again. Another question for the yes or no treatment, uh, delving back into ancient times once again. The question today is, was Aristotle a great man? Well, those of, those of you who have heard of Aristotle, uh, the Athenian philosopher, might be saying, how can this even be a question? I mean, he is regarded as one of the great philosophers of all time. Of course he was a great man. Ah, but there are those who don't care for Aristotle, who want to uh, say, no, he wasn't a great man, owing perhaps to some of his uh, utterings, his, <laughs> his beliefs, made some mistakes along the way. Yeah, so uh, as in so many things of this sort, there are two sides to every story. Well, first of all, we ought to be thinking about Aristotle in the context of the golden age of Athens. Uh, Periclean Athens was really the fifth century uh, BC, and uh, Aristotle kind of followed that century largely. Um, but the uh, fifth century BC was characterized by three stunningly famous important uh, philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and, and Aristotle. So we have to kind of put them in the context of those three, and uh, I accordingly have created a timeline, uh, uh, which you will see starting with Socrates, uh, who, as I guess we all know, was the, uh, didn't write anything down, uh, one of the great uh, talkers and philosophers, uh, the uh, mentor of Plato, um, and alas, uh, a man who was forced because of his uh, beliefs and some of his <laughs> uh, unorthodox intemperate utterings to commit suicide by hemlock, oh dear. Then came Plato, uh, again, one of the great philosophers, uh, a student of Socrates, as I mentioned, uh, founder of the Academy, uh, wrote prolifically, uh, and we have much of his writings uh, still today. And he was a mentor and a teacher to Aristotle. And Aristotle himself uh, uh, was a pretty smart chap. <laughs> he was selected to be the tutor to the young boy who became Alexander the Great. So his, uh, even as a young man, his knowledge was highly regarded. Uh, Aristotle was one of the great polymaths. He, he got into really everything. And, and uh, had a lot to say on, on many different subjects. So, so there's the context. Um, so now it behooves us to get to, the, get to the main chance here. Let's decide whether or not Aristotle was a great man. Well, let's start out with the yes group who say yes he was. Well, first of all, by many uh, important observers of, of ancient times, Aristotle was really the one who created a systematic way of looking at philosophy. He's regarded by the, oh, the great polymath Mortimer Adler as the cornerstone of, of Western philosophy. He was regarded that way by the uh, early Christian Catholic scholars, uh, Albertus Magnus and uh, Thomas Aquinas as the uh, the man who absolutely set it all up for them to uh, devise a way of thinking about uh, the right life, the moral life, uh, the ethical questions, and so forth. So they, they all had the same thing to say about him. Um, he was the creator, really, of the philosophical tradition and the uh, way of thinking through problems in logic. Gosh, what a what a heritage, what a heritage. Okay, on top of this, he was a real polymath. He got himself into a lot of different uh, subjects, uh, scientific subjects. He was uh, involved in uh, zoology and biology and physics and astronomy. Uh, he had something to say about all of these things, uh, many of which uh, have uh, lasted and been and proven to be uh, pretty good. One or two have uh, fallen apart with subsequent scientific inquiry, but hey, that's the nature of science. Uh, Aristotle had huge influence on subsequent philosophers. Uh, 
the great Islamic philosophers of the uh, early Middle Ages uh, regarded him very highly as one of the one of the first teachers, one of the uh, progenitors of of their thinking. I've already mentioned that the Christian philosophers did, and even down into the era of the German uh, philosophers that I've mentioned elsewhere, uh, Hegel and Kant and and uh, Schopenhauer and Wittgenstein and all the rest of them, they all took something from Aristotle. So Aristotle was a man who showed the way for philosophers. He was, he was a, uh, a real innovator and a, a creator and, uh, of course, to do that, a real original thinker because although he had the benefit of um, Socrates and Plato before him, he was the one that that kind of pulled it all together, who codified it, who, who made a, a systematic uh, process available to, to, to subsequent thinkers. And then I guess I would say, as we'll uh, note uh, a little bit later, if you find some of his ideas objectionable, uh, well, the whole point of academic study and philosophical inquiry is to raise questions, to cause debate, to get the uh, both sides to every question out on the table and of course Aristotle did that he asked many questions um, and uh, he took some positions that everybody agrees with but uh, he was one who caused us to think and to think in a logical way and with some useful frameworks so how can we say anything other than Aristotle was a great man well there are others who might say, no, he wasn't a great man. First of all, he had some unpleasant ideas. Um, he, uh, he thought that uh, slavery made sense. Uh, we have to remember that in Periclean Athens and, and in the subsequent century, uh, the population was uh, heavily represented by slaves. The so-called democracy of Athens, that was only <laughs> for the free people uh, who uh, actually were in the minority of the, the population. There were a lot of slaves there. In the old days, uh, I've often been told that uh, the principal purpose of conquest, uh, the wars that went on in, in ancient times were to get slaves, not to acquire land or jewels or whatever, it's to get slaves. Because slaves are always very useful for an economy, uh, free labor, etc., etc. So there were plenty of those in Athens because Athens was successful militarily um, and uh, that was something that Aristotle approved of. Um, Aristotle also said that uh, sort of mm, less talented, uneducated, uh, kind of working class people uh, deserve to be that. Uh, they were there to serve the, the elite, the people like him. So uh, he was an unabashed elitist, he was definitely not an egalitarian, something that wouldn't sit too well in, in, to the, in today's uh, political world. Um, he also had some funny ideas about women. First of all, he didn't regard them as uh, being important. He regarded them as uh, many societies still do, I suppose, as inferior creatures, uh, something to be uh, exploited and, and taken advantage of there to, to, to serve men. Uh, he also had a, a couple of peculiar ideas. He, he said that women have fewer teeth than men. Sort of an odd observation. One would have thought that he would have asked one of his lady friends to open her mouth and count the teeth. So apparently he hadn't done that. And, and so nobody's quite sure why he said that. But, but that uh, alas, is a, is a piece of data that does make you um, question some of his uh, scientific inquiry. Uh, and, and next he made one or two famous mistakes. The biggest one, of course, was the question of uh, heliocentricity and whether the Earth rotates around the Sun or the Sun rotates around the Earth. And Aristotle uh, put forward the view, which hung on for quite a long time, uh, really until uh, overturned by Copernicus in, in Poland in the, in the 17th century that uh, everything rotated around the Earth. The Earth was the center of the universe and the planets, the sun, the moon, everything rotated around the Earth. Uh, and uh, well, that was subsequently proven to be wrong. 
Interestingly, interestingly, just as an aside, Stephen Hawking once commented about this whole deba debate about the orbit of the Earth, and he said, actually, you can make the case that the sun uh, revolves around the Earth. He said, it's just that <laughs> the equations are a bit more complicated. I love that one. <laughs> Uh, Aristotle also had a, uh, a funny view about the role of the Earth, which I suppose uh, followed from his views about everything rotating around the Earth, and that is that the Earth had always been there. It was perpetual. It was in an eternal state. It's all. It had always been there. It always would be. Uh, well, of course, uh, we we think we think we know better now, and we also think that we know that it's not going to be eternal either. We've only got, uh, what is it, three to five uh, billion years left, so there is a problem. There was one other famous mistake that he made, and that was about falling bodies. Um, he famously said that if you drop uh, two bodies from a great height, one much bigger and heavier and with greater mass than the other, the one with a greater mass, because of gravity, will fall faster. Uh, well, Galileo went up to the top of uh, Tower of Pisa and proved that wrong. Uh, he had uh, dropped a big ball and a little ball, and they both hit the ground at the same time. And there's kind of Newtonian physics, really, that, that explains uh, why that's the case. So that, that, was a, that was a mistake that he made. So there are, there are some reasons why we might want to say Aristotle wasn't a great man. He had some repugnant um, ideas, uh, so some uh, philosophical observations about uh, women, about uh, slavery, about uh, uh, people's place in society that uh, were perhaps uh, destructive and, and uh, weren't, uh, weren't attractive at all. And, and he also made a lot of mistakes, so therefore we have to question his science and so forth. So that's the argument uh, for his really not being a great man. Well, what's my take on this? Well, I guess first of all, uh, and this is really in defense of Aristotle, one has to use the argument about you have to remember the times and what people be believed then and what the what the uh, mores and customs and uh, uh, modus vivendi were of 4th uh, century, 5th and 4th century Athens. Uh, they were largely slaves. They had a lot of menials about looking after them. So one can argue that wasn't a very nice thing, but that was the world they lived in. So, so it's a bit like saying, uh, well, you know, when the Catholic Church uh, in the Inquisition just kept torturing people to make them uh, admit that they weren't a Catholic and didn't believe in Jesus, uh, people shrug and say, well, that's just the way it was, you know, uh, we wouldn't do that now, but uh, in those days it was okay. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a bit of a, uh, a, a compromised argument, but it does explain why he thought the way he did. Uh, the second point I would like to make about Aristotle, however, is this notion about how all science builds on the science that went before us, before it. Uh, scientists stand on each other's shoulders, as they say. Uh, if uh, any scientist had not existed before the current scientist, the current scientist wouldn't have had as much to work with and wouldn't have gotten as far. We should never forget that. Even if some scientists make mistakes, uh, subsequent scientists uh, learn something and accomplish something by virtue of proving that the previous lot were wrong. Uh, but it stimulates further inquiry. So the fact that Aristotle made a few mistakes uh, is something that uh, uh, all scientists do. Uh, why should we treat him differently? Uh, and then finally, I must say that uh, his contributions to the whole notion of philosophy and logic are unparalleled. He created this stuff. He, he was an innovator of the first sort. So I guess in sum, what I, what I would say in the historic con, uh, context of Athens, uh, that Socrates taught Plato, Plato taught Aristotle, and Aristotle taught us all. Okay, that's my view. Well, I hope you liked it. In any case, the usual stuff. Give me a like, uh, uh, subscribe, please, comment, uh, ask for a notification, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.